We're on. They're going to have fun. Central Institute. Their crew. Uh, first letter tonight. He's... Thank you, Vinny. Um, he's 19. I've already had my coffee. We're way ahead. He's 19 and already decided to become a father. It's not one of these characters running around. Second letter tonight. My husband's a two-faced mongrel. Somehow he's managed to portray himself as an angel in the eyes of my children. And the last letter tonight. How can anyone calling... A, how can anyone... <laughs> Will you shut up? I can't hear myself think. How can calling anyone get you in trouble? Well, it did me a few years ago and it did again tonight. And in about 10 seconds, we're going to have a gorgeous lineup of shut up, you guys, of panellists coming in to address your letters, all these and more, coming up in about 10 seconds. Don't go away. Get out of here, will you? <laughs> What's going on? Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on there, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. For the movies, they say the X person's there like 200 try. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Lovely to have your company. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour with a beautiful lineup of women. First up, it's been a while. Hello, Eddie. Where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? Oh, What's going on? I think I've been hibernating. It's winter time. Doesn't everyone no, hibernate at this time? No, I know your here? style. You've been away. You've been back. You've been away. You've been back. You've been... It's always like that. Oh, thanks, Mitch. I, you know, you play it up. You play it up. You make it sound like it's all so glamorous, but really it's not. I haven't been anywhere. I've been here in Perth under my duna cover. Now, if you get up at 5.15 every morning, does this mean we're going to keep you up tonight? Um, well, no, I'll be home soon, won't I, Mitch? Yeah, 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 but 5.15 every morning? Oh, I try to, got to keep fit. For the last six months, you were telling us before the show started? Yeah. <laughs> and you're not about to fall asleep on the panel? No, Mitch, I'll be here for the next half an hour, don't worry right. about that. Get a bucket of water ready, guys, in case she nods off. Hello, Anita. Hello. You don't get up at... 5.15 in the morning. I admire Eddie for doing that. I really wish I could do it, but I'm what time not do you a wake up in the morning? person. Um, sometimes it's 7.30, like 8 o'clock to be at work by night. Yeah, yeah. I like to push it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the latest you sleep in on a weekend? On the, well, I've been working seven days, so... So you do the 7.30 yeah, thing on Yeah, but if I could, well. if yep. I had nothing on on the weekend and you could let me sleep, I could easily sleep till 12. All right, I won't wake you up this weekend. I'll let you sleep in, all right? <laughs> Hello, Michaela. Hello, Gary. Second time on the panel for you. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah? Uh-huh. What, mm -hmm. what time do you sleep until of a morning? Well, I have TAFE uh, five days a week. Not as good as Anita. I mean, seven days a week working is quite <laughs> intense. Uh, no, usually around 6.30 in the morning. So you're a 6.30 in the morning baby yeah. too. Wow. I'm a morning person though. What about on weekends? Well, Saturdays are work, so 6.30. Then Sundays is a sleep in. Woo! One day to sleep in? <laughs> That's something? Yeah. Day I'm of lucky. rest, Sunday. Never on Sunday, what's your sleep in day? Hello, Candice. Hey, g'day. There's a fine line for me between wake up time and get up time. Oh. <laughs> yes. I set the alarm for 6 30 on weekdays. And get up? But that's an ambition, usually around about 7 o'clock. Just kind Another of. Another half an hour to. Yeah, check the news on my phone and check the so, Facebook. So you wake up at 6 30, you check your news yeah, on the phone the news, then. Check my news. So you don't get a, a half hour of languaging. No, well, you know, I can I can process it. I can face the world knowing that I'm somewhat up to date with what's happened in the world overnight. I feel good. None of these women are slouches. They get up early in the morning. Eddie actually goes not for by a run choice. At that time too. <laughs> that. Best you beat all of us though. Quarter past Best five. Here we go. Here's a bit of a slouch, I think. George of Mandurah in WA writes to us: "Dear Sweet and Sour, he's 19 and already decided to become a father." <laughs> we say Mandra? Yes, we did. Um, he's been seeing a girl for two years and uh, they broke the news to me just last week. Now, she's a bit older than him at 24, but that's hardly enough to blame this on her biological clock ticking. So what's really going on here? I'm not about to say he'd be a bad father and he's great with his baby sister. Surely, though, he's too young to, make, to take on this enormous responsibility. Won't it ruin his life? I've found it hard to get him alone and I really feel like I should try to rain on his parade, bring him down to earth, and just maybe he'll see that it's not such a great idea. I want him to think about the things he'll miss out on, like the earning power he'll be losing by skipping university, 
He could better afford a child in four years' time when as a uni graduate he could earn double the chicken feed he's on now. Surely 19 for a male is far too young to seriously become a parent. Well, George, let's have a look and see what Eddie's got to say. Eddie, 19, male, too young? Uh, black or white, yeah, I think 19 is too young for a male to have a baby. Look, you do say, though, that he'd be a great father. Um, I totally agree that his earning capacity, if he didn't go to uni, would probably somewhat suffer. Um, but I do think 19's too young. Try and maybe go off and buy him some really gruesome baby books. Show him what it's really about. It's not just about having a little toddler to play with when you're bored at home. He doesn't um, know, does he? He doesn't know what he's in for. He's just a kid himself. Honestly, he's too he's young. He's got all these romantic notions. Yep, and I, I don't know. I guess you've just got to keep talking to him and just keep putting the nappies, preferably dirty, under his nose. <laughs> there are some societies where 19's fine, and in the past, many centuries ago, maybe that's fine, but we live in the Western world that offers individuals so much and you're tempted. Can a 19-year-old avoid the temptation and become a good father? Mm, look, I'd like to think so, but I don't think so, because your child, you are a child, and even when she says in four years' time, and that's still only 23, and yeah. I think especially boys, they need to get out there and they need to experience life before they actually settle down, because they need to be responsible, and at 19, I just don't think you're responsible enough. I mean, there's so many people Man. getting married young, and then by the time they're early 20s, mid 20s, they are um, so, divorcing. Does it say anything about marriage or are they just going to have a baby? They're just going to well, have a baby. They've been together for two years. They've been together for two years, they're going to have a baby. Nothing about marriage. Well, you don't have to tie the two together nowadays, do you? Not necessarily. Not. Michaela? Well, I think males at 19 are quite immature. Um, <laughs> I can tell you males at 60 who are immature. Thank well, you very much. I just think that, you know, okay, you have the baby, just say there's a really great party coming up and you want to go out, you know. That will then happen. Then you're tied down with a baby, is it, you know. That will is it happen. worth it? And, like, I want to know what pressure this woman's putting on him, you know. Maybe she's like, no, you'll be fine, you're really, you know, she's mature five years for your older age, than you know. You don't know what she's saying to him. So. Do you think she's being a bit of a... A mum, she wants kids now and she's putting some pressure on him. Then. Absolutely, I think she is. So Is he too young to recognise that? I want to know what his parents are saying. What, what do they think about it? Well, Because he is quite I young. Can't think that they'd be too happy. Candice, if, if you had a son that came, in years to come that came to you and said, Hi mum, I've uh, found the girl of my dreams. Uh, I'm 19, she's 24 and I want to have kids. What would you say? Hey, good on you, mate. Go for it. Go for it. Absolutely. Oh, no yeah, you have little life. faith, you guys. Yeah, you have little faith, eh? Um, yeah, the odds are against him. You have little faith in statistics. <laughs> the, the odds are against him. The odds him. are against him, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. At age, being in, being older doesn't necessarily mean you'll be a good parent. Yeah, I know right. several young parents who have made the best of their situations because of their religious beliefs or because of the circumstances they've been thrust in. What does he need for it to work? He needs a job. He needs a job. It doesn't. He doesn't necessarily have to be a uni grad. Um, I'm a uni grad myself, and well, uh, I can tell you, it doesn't necessarily what, improve your chances for doctors. What fatherly instincts sure. does he need as well? Um, patience, and and it's, this is where it becomes very, very individual. If he has the traits that are needed, if this was a woman and a woman at 19 said that she was ready to have children, give birth. I know, I know of several young women who, you know, we describe them as born mothers with the maternal instinct. It doesn't mean that they're ready right now, but it doesn't mean they'd be an unfit parent at 19. There are, you know, I'm not saying you should rely on this, but there are structures in place to financially help support um, low-income parents and low-income families. Um, Would you do that, though? Would you, you shouldn't. confine yourself to a life of welfare support? But that's, that's if it is. If, if he has a 24-year-old partner who theoretically could stay at home, there's no reason why that would affect his earning potential. It's true. And he'll certainly mature very quickly. <laughs> and good on him. Hope he does. All right, we've got to go. When we come back, we're going to be talking about men who are two-faced in relationships. When we come back. Do you know any? Yes. Just a <laughs> very good and it extends the romance too. Yeah. You're not with each other all the time. Welcome back to Sweetens Hour. If you'd like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's about to appear on your screen. There it is, right now. Letters at sweetensour.net.au, and for every letter that we like and does get to the panel.
to be discussed. We're going to send you to the movies, courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. There it is. The movie we're sending you to is... Sapphires. The Sapphires. <laughs> the, the Sapphires. You're always on this show. <laughs> there it is. And if you would also like to give us a tick on Facebook, here's the address. There you go. Facebook.com. Sweet and sour. Here we go. Next letter. Dear Mitch and Panel, my husband's a two-faced mongrel. Somehow he's managed to portray himself as an angel in the eyes of my kids. We've been married for 13 years. He wasn't always the scumbag he is today. We have had a very happy memories together and we have two beautiful children. Jane is 10 and Michael is 12. They both adore him because, as much as I hate to admit it, he's a great father. The kids love it whenever he's around, but he works in Brisbane during the week and so he's only with us for the weekends. When we are alone together, however, it's another story. We fight constantly, he calls me names, he's even threatened to turn the kids against me and that worries me more than anything. It's clear to me that this relationship is long passed over, so it's what happens if we get a divorce that really worries me. I'm terrified of losing my kids, and if they were asked at this point who they'd want to live with, I think they might say him. And in any courtroom drama, I can't be sure I'll win custody. This Father's Day, the kids made him a mug, the classic best dad in the world. I nearly choked. How can I rescue my kids from this man? Gina of Kensington in New South Wales. I don't like the sound of this woman at all. I'm sorry, Candice. What's you, your take on Gina, first of all? You get my goat, Gina. Oh, you good. get you, you raise my hackles. Uh, um. She doesn't like her husband. He's he's away from from the house five days during the. He's earning the week. a living, if you don't mind. Uh, not just because he wants to, he's earning a living. He's, and the kids uh, think he's fantastic. Shouldn't every kid think their dad is fantastic? Absolutely, and but you would be wrong, absolutely wrong to meddle in that relationship. She can't shut her mouth for two days because she determines that this relationship... Sorry, I don't like you very much, Gina, that's oh, obvious. I completely I'll agree, she's absolutely wrong. You can't meddle in a father-child relationship. Just like the father of your children cannot meddle in the relationship that you have between your children as well. Whatever problems you have with your husband lie between you and your husband. Don't involve your children. It's only going to lead to long-term stress for your kids, which I'm sure you don't want, and it's not ever gonna end pretty for you. Um, the family court is there for a reason. If you don't have faith in the court system, then consider moving to another country. Unfortunately, it's And leave not, your kids with your dad. It's not a perfect system, but it's the best we have, and they see this kind of thing all the time. No, there's no guarantee you'd get custody, but there's no guarantee he'd get custody either. It's the kind of thing that needs to be tested in a courtroom because I think there's a lot more to this story than you let on. And you know what? If they choose him or the courts award him, you, you yourself say he's a great father, so so be it. All right, Michaela, uh, Candace and I being too hard on the woman? No, not at all. I think that... <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, if she said to the husband to go away and he actually does go away, you know, that's destroying the kids and you know she's going to lose the kids anyway because they're going to be like why would you take my dad away they're not going to understand but and, you know later she, on down the she track. half suspects that they like him more anyway why does that ma like you don't generally like a parent more than the other one and if they do it's because you're why? doing something wrong not because the dad's doing something wrong so look at yourself I yeah think. look at yourself I, I agree Anita I think she's very jealous She's jealous of him because he's such a good father. Um, and he I goes away can... five days to provide for his kids. Yes. Come back and give them all the love in the world and she's and, jealous and of I, those two days. I agree with Candice in that, that you know, your problems need to be sorted out between you and him. Um, keep the kids out of it and all the kids need from you is your love and your support. Yeah. Why would you Absolutely. want to bugger up the relationship? If you need to get out, leave. That's my suggestion, sorry. Mm. Mm. Eddie? Yeah, if you need to get out, leave. But um, I I'm also believe, obviously, it takes two to tango. So she's written this letter. Yeah, obviously, it's written from her point of view. But I do, don't like the, the sound of things when she says that he, during the time when the kids aren't with them that he picks on her and he argues with her. 
That wouldn't be a hell of a lot of time considering he's only there two, two days, days a week and, and, he spends and he's the spending time all the time with the kids. Yeah, true. So what's she putting up with? An hour of abuse that she's probably initiated. Yeah, she's got a chip on her shoulder. Ah. <laughs> but look, you, you do have two issues here. You've got your relationship with your husband and then you've got your worry with your kids. So I think you need to sort obviously the situation out with your husband first. And if you decide mutually that you want to separate paths, then yeah, then you take the next step, which is either approaching the courts. But Seriously, stay out of the courts as, as, as hard as you can because they're the last place that you want to end your marriage in. Yeah, yeah, Mick, you wanted to say something just before we wrapped up? I have forgotten my point, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to. Okay, we're going to You're do. All right. We're going to do a quick vote. Who thinks she should pack up and get out of the relationship now? Right. Raise your hand. He I should. Think so, maybe. Raise your hand. <laughs> I'd like he's to learn he's more. happy. He's, he's not there five days a week. It's <clears throat> heaven for a bloke. Five oh, days a week to be with your mates and then come back to your two gorgeous kids. I Fantastic. remember my point. I'm sorry. <laughs> Michaela remembers her point. What's if your... it's that bad with your husband, then leave. Divorce. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, if she, instead of making, yeah, instead like, of involving the kids. She I wants everything. She wants yeah. the kids. She wants him away. She wants the kids to like her more. more. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. All right. So you yeah, say no. leave, stay. No, I'm, I'd like to learn more. I wouldn't like to say stay or leave, but I reckon sort, your, sort yourself out. Stay or leave? I think she needs to sit down and have a good chat with her husband. Stay? Two for staying? I think she's a two-faced. She's a two-faced. Oh, yeah. yeah, stay or leave? Uh, leave. For yeah, do sake. them all a favour and pack up. Um, nothing yet. She's got to work out herself because she's not happy. So then when she's decided that whether she's got what she's going to do, then she can decide whether Three she's going to stay. Three to stay and work it on out. And <laughs> it's your fault. When we come back, we're talking about saying the wrong thing when you're on the end of the phone or in business and it turns everything right around. Don't go away, Maura sweetens out. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. I wonder what he'd say about sweet and sour. Hmm. Here we go. Hello, Mitch and Pellas. How can anyone calling, how can calling anyone gorgeous get you in trouble? How well, it's happened to me <laughs> twice. I just don't get it. What sort of restrictive society have we turned into? The first time I accidentally sent a text message to my girlfriend that began, hello, gorgeous. It wasn't meant for her. And when she realized everything hit the fan, it was an innocuous message. And the girl I meant to send it to, I've always called affectionately gorgeous. The second time was after I'd just completed a small business deal with a woman. I was so excited and appreciative that beamingly I smiled and said to the woman, thank you so much, gorgeous. Well, she took so much offence that she cancelled the deal on the spot. Is this a woman thing? Is it a bloke not understanding thing? Or is it just a thing that needs to be ignored rather than fed? It comes to us from Scott of Brunswick in Victoria, Anita. Do you take offence to being called gorgeous? Oh, you I do. You do. No, you get to think on, about it. It depends on who. Mm. I mean, and it depends on how it's said. If it's, I don't know. If how can it be offensive? When when would you take it as an? I as wouldn't an take it as an offence. Okay. Why would think. why would a businesswoman take it as an offence? Is it demeaning? Well, maybe he said it in a way that she thought he was hitting on her, and therefore. But she didn't give him the benefit of the doubt, and she cancelled the deal. I know that's a little bit. That riles that, me. That's a bit full on. Maybe she was a lesbian. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't say that. Hang on, I've got lesbian mates too, and they love being called gorgeous. Well, maybe she took it the wrong way when she wanted a, a girl. I don't know. What, you know. what is the wrong way? You give someone a compliment, even at the end of it's it. It's a hard, it's, I don't know, it is a hard one. Yeah, I don't know. Eddie, when would you ever be offended by being called gorgeous? Um, well, at the end of the day, I probably wouldn't because it's always a good day, gorgeous, and I reckon that's quite cute when you get an old bloke saying that too. It's like, good day, mate, yeah, how yeah. you going? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't really take offence to it. All um, right, but the second issue is, what happens if your boyfriend's sending a text message to someone else and calling her gorgeous? Well, I probably wouldn't fire up like that. I might question him, um, but I don't think I'd respond like that. I would question him, check out the body language, see what he replies with, see how he goes like that. But. No, I don't think I'd fire up And then, if your gorgeous, boyfriend babe. was sending text messages to um, other women and calling them gorgeous, 
is it an issue? I don't, it depends on what type of person he is. I mean, if he's a very open, very affectionate person. And no, you know his character. And also, well, what else? It depends else is on the, yeah, their person's character. Establish relationships. I mean, if he's a real yep. blokey bloke and he doesn't call anyone gorgeous. A blokey bloke calls people out of, gorgeous. And then out g'day, of. G'day, love. G'day, gorgeous. How are you, love? Sheila. Yeah, but if it was out of the norm, then you would have to question it. But it depends on that type of person. If it was in if the norm, was. if it wasn't in the norm. Candace, mm, what's what? wrong with gorgeous? Context. Keyword, context. Same context. Deal. Um, it's not the word, it's the context. Think about it, would you say it to a dude? If you wouldn't say it to a dude, <laughs> then consider when you would say it. So, have you seen Pulp well, Fiction? Yeah, Pop it's not movie? that I remember it. Well. Kind of like there's a key scene where they're talking about a foot massage. Where, you know, one guy's saying that a foot yeah. massage is meaningless, it means nothing. But then turns around and says, you know, would, would you give a dude a foot massage? Would you, would you call a dude gorgeous? Would you say thanks, handsome? If, if it's a bloke you're not familiar enough with, then you'd probably avoid it. It's the same with right women. If, if you're in a an overly familiar, if you're, you're coming across overly familiar, are then people bloke, are going to feel are you uncomfortable. Call a bloke gorgeous. Hey, I'm not judging anyone for doing nothing. No, whether uh, you're going to call a bloke gorgeous. Well, uh, a woman, hello, gorgeous. If a woman's calling a bloke gorgeous. You'd I say g'day know. mate, You'd, you wouldn't say g'day Hello, big muscles, I don't know. you wouldn't <laughs> say g'day Sexy. handsome features, <laughs> you'd say would. great hair, you wouldn't say g'day great hair. G'day great hair. You wouldn't, you just wouldn't. Um, you wouldn't say that to a woman either, would you? G'day uh, great hair. <laughs> well, what's she showing you? She might slap saying me if you said great. I don't know, I think, I think the girlfriend was upset with the over familiarity. The, the, the girlfriend the, was. Yeah, that, yeah, that's another issue, that's yeah, an insecurity thing. wanted that thing. message to well, her. For her and she's, you know. Yeah, there's, there's, there's an issue of familiarity, like. and and you know, and there is partly you know, take people for who they are. If uh, you know, if you call me gorgeous, for example, we know each other quite well, so I wouldn't be offended by that. But right, I'm sending you a text yeah. tonight after the show and calling you gorgeous, <laughs> alright? You always do. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, are well, you ever going to get offended by someone calling you gorgeous? Is it is it an invisible line that men are crossing? Well, it's ever. For me, it depends on the person because there's some creepy guys out there who oh. are like, hey, gorgeous. And it's just like, you're the same age as my dad. Don't say that to me. Yeah, but it might be your uncle or something. Hello, gorgeous, how are you? Yeah, that's different. It's some stranger on the train who says it. That's when it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. That's the, that's you the one. You want to see my impression of an element? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a look at your impression afterwards. Yeah, very good. Um, so it depends. Yeah, and it depends also. Depends who it is. If you're having If so you don't know him and you're in a business deal, inappropriate. Yeah, what? Well, Unprofessional, yeah. I suppose. That's the best you can say. But if you're getting into so it's much excitement. problems with it, just stop saying it. Yeah. It's you not that hard to stop. Leave it at. You're writing us a letter. Yeah. But he, yeah. I like he's, that. It's, it's part of his habit. <laughs> Shall we give him a pair of limited edition sunnies, courtesy of a long treat? Do you Why like not? that letter or do you like <laughs> something else? They'll look gorgeous on you, Dale. They'll look gorgeous? <laughs> you like number... Anita likes number one? Well, we didn't like number two. Who was number two? <laughs> number two. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. That's two Gina of Kensington. Probably yeah, cheer her up a bit, a though, time. but no, I don't think she deserves it. Yeah, what do you reckon, guys? One or three? With one. Number one, okay, that's George of Mandurah. He's 19, he's decided to become a father. Yeah, and yeah. he's a He's going to want to go he's undercover. But <laughs> yeah, he, no, he will need the pair of sunnies because he'll need to put the money towards other things. Very well, true. Yeah, point. let's give it to George. We've got to go. Coming out to George of Mandra and WA, a pair of limited edition sunnies, courtesy of Elon Trees. Here we go, Eddie. Good night, hun. Good night, Wonderful Mitch. Wonderful to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having we'll me We'll get again. you to bed before... Um, yeah, we done well. No, you're probably sometime. not no, going to get you right. eight hours. Nine o'clock, that's Sorry. all right. Sorry, mate. No. What time are you waking up? Me, in the morning, probably seven. Seven oh, thirty. you've got plenty right, of time. Maybe, no problem. Maybe thanks eight. for being on the show, Michaela. <laughs> eight thirty. Yes. What time are you waking up? Six thirty. You'll yeah. make it as well. Adding another one to the 6.30 column. Well, oh, 6.30, everyone's up at yeah, 6.30. Yeah, All right. Not by choice. We've got to go because I've got to get up early. Thanks for being around tonight, folks, and having us in your lounge room. Thank our wonderful crew and thank all of our panellists. Good night, Australia. Bye-bye. <laughs>